Good afternoon, sticky learning lunches. Lunches. I'm going to give it a couple more seconds while I wait for the last few people to come into the room. Good afternoon, Colin. Darren, good to see you. Tim, welcome as always. Just as we're getting ourselves in, just going to make sure, let's get these phones on flight mode. Zero out the distraction. 100% attention. Just going to give it a moment. Hello, Claire, good to see you. Welcome in. It's Thursday. It's good to be here. And we're going to dive in in just a moment. Karen, good to see you. Thanks for being here. So right now, before we even get into today's session, those of you that are here now ready to start, that thing that you said that you were procrastinating on or had been procrastinating on, you hopefully, fingers crossed, you've come up with one or two actions that you could have taken or have taken to help move you forward and get that thing done. Get it off your to-do list. Stop the procrastination and you know get that action in place. How are you progressing? On a scale of one to 10, one being not at all, 10 being completely taking action, on a scale of one to 10, whereabouts are you on actually moving towards getting that thing done? Ten, one not at all, 10 being complete action or taking action. We've got an eight, good. We've got 10, good. So those things that you said, happy days, yeah, nice. Got another 10 in there. So those things that you said you were procrastinating on about, even with two 20-minute conversations or two 30-minute conversations, you've now come up with one small action that you could take and you have taken, and you're now moving forward to get that thing done. Howard, no need to apologize. You're with us. That's all that matters. This is it, this is as simple as that. When you see it as too big and it's over overpowering, you know, it's too big, it's you know, it's the big hairy ugly frog that we don't want to eat, you know, we, we find reasons and we make the excuses to put it off. But actually one small action moves you closer towards it. How do you now feel in one word about that thing that you were procrastinating about? Knowing now that you've taken at least, you know, one, two, three actions against it, how do you feel about that thing you were procrastinating about? New faces in the room, I love this, good to see you. Baskaran, thank you for being here. Lynn, Petra, good to see you again. Ramela, rock and roll, productive. This is exactly what it's about. You know, there was a reason why you were procrastinating about that thing. How long has that thing that you've been procrastinating about been in your ment on your mental to-do list? How long has it been there for? Do you have the wherewithal to take action once I'm in control? Several years, two days, absolutely. Now it might be two days worth of procrastination or several years, but actually now you've taken an action, you're moving, you know, you've now taken one small step. The journey of a thousand miles, as we all know, you know, it starts with one step. And the successes of tomorrow are made by the actions that we take today. Or they may seem like cliche memes or, or quotes, it's the truth. And the moment you can see the excuses that you're saying that we talked about in day one, those seven excuses, easy, boring, certainty, thrill, whatever it might be, when we hear those words, we can understand that we're procrastinating. When we boil it down, we can then understand which one of the four values that we're, we're, we're moving towards and which one of those two fears is starting to come up. This hope this is all plugging into some of the thinking that you're starting to see how you're talking, how you're behaving about certain things. And when you can see this a little bit more clearly, it just gives you an opportunity to do something a little bit differently. Good. And we haven't even got into today's session yet. I was just giving you the warm up of, you know, of plugging in from yesterday and the day before, quick recap. So everyone, you're in the room. Thank you for being here. Welcome to today's Sticky Learning Lunch with me, Nathan Simmons, Senior Leadership Coach and Trainer for MBM. 
making business matter, the home of sticky learning. And we are the leadership development and soft skills provider to the grocery and manufacturing industry. Idea of these sessions is to give you new ideas, uncommon thinking delivered in uncommon ways to help you get uncommon results, more success, more successful than other people have been in their thinking, their approaches and their delivery. That's what this is about. I'm going to give you these micro learnings to help you be the best version of you in the work that you do right now and preparing you potentially for the return to work if that hasn't happened yet. Good. Phones, I've already done mine for those that have arrived afterwards. Phones on flight mode, 100% attention. Top of a fresh page. Let's get some a fresh page for fresh thinking. At the top of that page, keepers. These are the things you want to remember, remind yourself about. And when you go back and read it to reignite that thinking and help you really make this, this learning stick, that's what it's about, making sure the behavioral change goes in, it stays there and you do something differently. Let's do this. Day three of procrastination. Excuses recovered. Uh, human needs, the fears. Where does all this come from? So what we have, or when this comes up, is we learn at a very early age that right and wrong is a binary equation. We learn that failure is bad and, and that, you know, that it's, you know, that failure is painful and success is good. And we learn to steer away from the failure. And we learn this as a, as a simple yes or no, it's ones and zeros. Primarily where we learn this though, is you know in, in early life is where we learn these first two fears is around the age of kind of two three four years old we start to learn these fears it's taught to us by our parents and our grandparents uh, they did the best that they could with the best that they had and to, you know to deliver the best possible result they could and that was in our parents you know in our in our upbringing which is where we're at right now when we start to understand these behaviors and where these fears come from we can start to unpick them when we then go to school who here, and I may have mentioned this before, I'm going to ask you guys here, who here remembers spelling tests at school? Yes or no, who did spelling tests when they were at school? I'm presuming this is probably a fairly international thing. Yes, okay, so you would get, you know, when you were younger, you would get given 10 words and you would go home and you would learn those 10 words and then next week you would, um, you know, you would do your spelling test. Everyone remember this? And you would sit there and the teacher would read out the word and then you would diligently write it down. You get to the end of the words and hope that you, you know, you've done all your, um, your revision and you'd learned these words by heart and how to spell them. And then you get to school and you write them down and then you pass them to the person to the left. You know, correct me if I'm wrong, everyone, remember, everyone with me on this. You know, you've written your 10 words down and you pass them to the person to the left and you have to tick or cross them. And you're doing this for the person to your right and the person to your left is doing this for you. And then what happens? You know, you get a series of ticks and crosses and then the teacher calls up the, the, the uh, uh, celebrates. Who got 10 out of 10? Everyone's like, yeah, I got 10 out of 10. Um, and maybe you didn't. Maybe you got six out of 10. Maybe you got five out of 10. And what are the sort of things? Do you remember what the, the, the person to your left or to your right, whoever you gave your spelling test, do you remember what they used to call you when you know, your so-called friends would call you when you didn't get you know, the highest score or you got the lowest score for whatever reason? And you don't have to write them in the, in the, in the chat box or the question box. You know, in your so-called friends, because we don't know any better, they're calling you thick or they're calling you stupid. So you start to learn this behavior, you know, that, okay, the people that get 10 out of 10, they get celebrated, but the people over here that don't, you know, that doesn't feel good. But what we do is we experience insults and we start to learn that right and wrong is that binary equation. We start to learn, like I say, that fear, uh, that failure comes with a price of pain. It doesn't feel good and success feels good and is celebrated. So we always have to be moving towards success. But the interesting dynamic of this is that fear, sorry, that failure isn't the opposite of success. Failure is the route to success. You cannot have one without the other. They're not opposite ends of some um, uh, sort of spectrum. They're a continuum. They're part of the same thing. 
night and day aren't opposites, they're one thing. They're a natural flow of harmony of how nature works. You know, up and down, left and right, doesn't matter. One isn't the opposite of the other, the other is the counterbalance to make the other one work. You can't have one without the other. But at an early age, we learn that this failure is painful because it comes with um, um, insults or derogatory language or negative feeling, or that you didn't do, you didn't work hard enough. So this fear of not enough, I'm not intelligent enough to pass my spelling test. No, I can't afford to fail this because my parents will think less of me. Anyone experience this? Yes or no? Anyone have some experiences of this in, in different ways? Or, you know, I can't get less than 10 out of 10 because someone so will think less of me. Yes or no? And it comes in different ways. The interesting thing is as we get older, we the, the words that we use, as I said to you before, become slightly more complex and nuanced because we think we're more complicated. But the truth is, most of us are just young children trapped in adult bodies, still living by these same excuses that we were making previously. So it's important we understand where this learning comes from and we can do something different. And most of the time it's because we think that that person thinks that about us. We spend most of our life wandering around worrying and thinking, uh, worrying about what we think someone else thinks of us. And you know what? This is the truth. Do you know what those people actually think of you? This is the best bit. Nothing, because they're too busy thinking, what are you thinking about them? So actually there's this complete disconnect with what's going on in our heads compared to reality which then causes these fears to come up, which then turns into procrastination. Does this, I'm hoping this makes sense. Do you see how this links in with the, with the, the seven excuses into the, the human needs and the, and the four fears, the two fears that come up? Can you see how these link? Yes or no, you're with me? There's a slight delay, got it, yeah. Makes sense, good, yes. With you, good, thank you. They take a while to come in these, uh, the, 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 these responses. So what happens is, predominantly, I did that a bit bigger than I wanted to. This is you, you're a battery. Simple circuit, goes up here, goes down here. So this battery is you generating lots of energy. Up here, simple circuit, light bulb this is the light bulb of massive success we send all our energy up there and the light bulb goes off and everybody sees us the whole world's fantastic we, we illuminate the world and our work and what we do in our relationship by all this energy we put up here but because we learn this failure mechanism or this understanding of what failure is and we learn that it's painful that rather than send the energy up here and set this light bulb off in case we get it wrong we create a trip switch. Because of that, us believing that failure is the opposite to, opposite to success. So the electricity goes up here. We get concerned about this light bulb going off because we don't know, we haven't got any certainty now that it actually is going to work. We trip the switch, the energy goes through here and goes back to the battery and the light bulb never goes off. So we don't actually put what we need to out in the world to demonstrate what's going on. But how many times did it take Edison to make the light bulb? How many times did it take Edison? 1,000 plus, some people say 1,000, some 10,000, thousands, hundreds, 600, who knows, who cares? If Edison at any one point had then suddenly said, oh, do you know what, this light bulb making is not for me, where would we, where would we be right now? If he had said at any point, this isn't for me, I'm not doing it, in the dark, good. Multiple responses coming in to say, in the dark, absolutely, this laptop wouldn't exist, the light ring wouldn't exist, mobile phones wouldn't exist, street lights wouldn't exist. But every time that he made a light bulb or was attempting to make a light bulb and it didn't work, he just said, I've just found another way how not to make a light bulb keep going. 
because he understood that failure was the route to success. How do we overcome this? Three steps, super easy. When we understand this light bulb and that you're setting off, now whether it's failure, whether it's success, it has to have the intent to set the light bulb off so you can put that energy out there. Do I get every one of these sticky learning lunches correct 100% of the time? Yes or no, do I get these lunch, lunch, sticky learning lunches correct or not 100% of the time? Can't even get the words out this time. Do I understand though, or do I go back and reflect and say, okay, actually, how do I make this better? What have I learned from this? How do I interact with people in a different way? You know, even, and I'm pretty sure Tim mentioned this to me before, if you go back and look at episode one of Sticky Learning Lunches and compare it to episode wherever we are now, 37, 38 in this whole series currently, and see what's happened and what's different, you'll see that it wasn't perfect. Now, practice doesn't make perfect. Practice makes progress. And we have to keep moving forward. And this is the light bulb of massive success because it's the light bulb of massive progress. Because if I learn them from that and share it and build on it, it still gives people new concepts, new impetus and new ability to keep moving themselves forward. How do we get through this? One, the first thing we do, because procrastination is in your nature, you cannot get away from it. Do not fight your nature, work with nature. We got three Ps. I'm hoping you can see all of this. Three Ps. I'm going to chuck a colour pen to go a little bit of dynamics. The first P. Plan. Super simple. Super simple. I'm not a fan of the word simple, but we'll go with this. Plan time to procrastinate. Your brain is going to do it in some way, shape or form, depending on the project, the relationship, whatever it, whatever it is you're doing. It's going to happen. Embrace it. The only reason that procrastination becomes a problem is one, your fear kicks in and you believe you're not good enough or you're going to lose love. That kicks in and then you start to make excuses. The other reason that the problem is a problem is is because we don't bookend it and stop it or give it a, um, a stop start point to give it a framework to play in. So what we do is we book 10 to 15 minutes into our calendar when we want to plan or prepare or organize and, and face into something that we want to work on or something that we feel might be challenging that causes these excuses to come up. Oh, I heard myself say this excuse. Okay, let's plan some time to procrastinate. Sounds interesting, doesn't it? Anyone Has anyone ever been told to plan time to, to procrastinate before? Yes or no? No, absolutely. No, no, absolutely. Plan time to procrastinate. 10 to 15 minutes, bookend your time to procrastinate and go crazy. You've got 15 minutes to go crazy. Procrastinate as much as you like. So then what we do is the second P. We want to provoke. What do we mean by this? We ask open questions to help understand what the procrastination is coming from. We hear maybe the voice of the critic. We hear um, you know, voices of our parents or people that told us we can't do this or can't do that. You know, don't do that, you'll be eaten by a wild seaweed or you know, attacked by sharks, whatever it is. It comes from a children's book, by the way, that, that part. We use open questions to then focus our attention because the quality of your day is dictated by the quality of the questions that you start it with. So when we use these questions to create that focus, we can either choose to make statements of I can't do that or that's too difficult. Well, great. Thanks for that, Mr. Voice of the, or Mrs. Voice of the Critic. What would you suggest I do? Based on the care and love and you know, the fact that you want to help me be, stay safe and feel good, what would you suggest that I do to make this a success? What action could I do right now that's going to move me forward? What's the one smallest thing we can do right now to create the biggest impact? So by using these questions that I've used over the last couple of days, you can say, oh, actually, if I just do that, that makes that. So rather than making a statement of I am, which is one of the most definitive statements you can create about yourself, I am um, a failure. I am um, you know, challenged. You know, I, I am... Um, lacking in resources. You know, you're making a definite statement about yourself and your capabilities. So in this, what we say, you know, rather than saying, I am this, what can I do about this? 
What can I learn that's going to move this forward? What do I need to and pay attention to? What things do I need to do to create some security in this? So I use the excuses that are coming up and I turn them into questions. So maybe it's boring. So what can I do to make this exciting that's going to help me move it forward? How can I create a certain amount of certainty in this and still stimulate some new responses? So we start to shift the questions. We use our coaching questions, our open questions, that are going to help us provoke some new responses. By the way, you may remember that we've just suddenly received these, the coaching cards, the grow coaching cards. There's a series of questions in there that can help you do this as well. So whether it's that deck or whether it's the leadership deck, there's a deck of cards and that's going to help you. There's a rather serious looking gentleman on the top of that pack there as well. Super happy with these. And I know these are landing on doormats now. We've had some challenges getting these out. They are on their way. If you haven't got your deck, in the chat box is the deck of coaching cards. Please get yourself a pack, it's five pound, huge amounts of value that are gonna help you do that. So we ask ourselves some serious open questions that are gonna help us take action. Number two, num sorry, number three on here. The last P in this, as always with any of my models, is about taking action, progress. So we've taken 10 to 15 minutes to plan the time to actually procrastinate. We put it in our diary. We've asked some open coaching questions to ourselves to get some new ideas about what we can do and what we would like to do and how we want to move it rather than just sitting in it. And then as a result of that, we take action. We progress the plan that we just put in place. I hope this is useful. I hope this makes sense to everyone. Conscious of time. What has been useful from today's session that's going to help you take even more action and create even more success in your life? work and at home. What have you taken away from today? Wait for those coming. I haven't got a drink. I let myself down and didn't make a cup of tea. Failure is not the opposite of success. It is the route to success, absolutely. Most of us are just kids trapped in adult bodies dealing with the same fits completely. Just found another way not to make a light bulb. Yeah, believe, uh, absolute truth and practice doesn't make perfect. It makes progress. Absolutely. They say, you know, that perfect practice makes perfect progress. You know, whatever. No. There is no such thing as perfect. You you are enough. We are perfect. There is Perfection is in absolutely everything when you want to get down to the spiritual. At the same time, though, when we take actions, we're developing skill sets. It just makes progress. It moves us. Failure is the root of success. Absolutely. Plan. Absolutely. Three Ps. Amazing. Good. Uh, to think of better questions to ask myself. Absolutely. Fears equal action. Agreed. When you fear, feel the fears, we get caught in it and we get stuck in it. Um, you, know, you know, this failure, one of the things I've shared many times, and I'll, I'll share it a million times again, you know, in the nicest possible way, shit is the best fertilizer. Okay. Now, horse manure grows incredible crops. What that means is, though, is we use that stuff uh, as nourishment. And we can either choose to sit in that. And if you do that with seeds, I've got my, uh, my, my chili plants growing on the window sills at the moment. If we sit in that, the seeds rot. But what they actually do is they put down roots and they grow incredibly. So when we have these fears and from these pains, from these failures, we can either choose to sit in that or we can grow from it. It's completely up to us. Good, three Ps and flow, night and day, failure, success. Absolutely, you can't have one without the other. You wouldn't know what success was if you didn't know what it felt like to fall over and cut your knees. I hope this is making sense. What questions have you got for me about today, the last two days? What, what is it I can help you with around procrastination, action, all these elements? While those are coming through, tomorrow's sticky learning lunch, we are getting into time management. OK, so we're going to do seven stages of time management. We're going to go through the, um, some core understandings in there to really help you take some of this stuff. So you start to see how some of these values and these understandings and the procrastination stuff then is going to knock over into our time management, how we're making sure we're structuring our diaries and our approaches to things in a, in a different way so that we can get those actions in place and we can keep taking the actions and moving us forward. So if you have not registered for tomorrow's session, wherever that you know that chat box is on your screen, the link is in there for tomorrow's session and the future sessions. Please go there, register. And also, open question to you all. Who do you know that would benefit 
from more and uh, some some stronger skills in time management who do you know that you need to share this link with that's going to help them improve how they're managing their time call to action copy that link into an email send it to them and tell them about these sticky learning lunches share it with them so they can then turn up it's free and it's going to help them get better results with their time i've got steely silence on the question front yes or no do you have let all everyone let me know yes or no do you have a question right now and if it's a no that's absolutely fine Got a couple of those come in. Good. Is motivation killed by fear? I.e., I don't associate with the fears, perhaps wrongly at the time. I feel my issue is being motivating, motivated. The end goal. <sighs> Absolutely. So, difference between motivation and inspiration. It's super important we understand what this is. Okay. So, motivation is external. Inspiration is internal. That's when we get kind of to um, extrinsic and intrinsic motivations, or the, the, the same motivations motivation is your salary motivation is um, the packet of haribo um, the whatever it is double time overtime it's all outside of you if you have children they're actually a motivation motivations are finite you know they they have a stopping point in the nicest possible way you know, and i explain this is my daughter is motivation at some point i will stop being or my daughter will so therefore that motivation has a stopping point inspiration though is internal you know that is infinite so it starts with in the same as inspiration you cannot take my inspiration away from me it's the same thing that drives me to deliver the content in these sticky learning lunches as it is that drives me who do i want to be in relation to my daughter what do i want to contribute to this situation to this relationship so when we understand that, yes, your fears will get in the way of you displaying who you are at your fundamental best. Your fears will you know, cut those things off for you. But we will, those are the things that we've been learned and we've overlaid over the top of who we are. And then the excuses come out just to justify why we're staying where we're staying. So when you hear the excuse, you're procrastinating. Which fear is it that's boiling up? Actually, let's bring that down. What do I want to bring to this conversation? What are my values? What's important to me? Okay, how do I make sure I keep delivering that? So again, when we're getting to this prov provocation stage and we're asking, you know, what are your values? What, you know, what is it you want to bring to this that's going to make a difference for these people? What would you like to be contributing? What will keep you engaged in this? And even, you know, what is the thing that, you know, is bigger than this that I need to be striving for that this, leads me into is it what i really want absolutely is it what i really want it comes back to that motivation inspiration hold on to that no you've done it very well thank lynn you're very welcome i hope this is truly useful um thank you very much for being here you've got the link for the coaching cards in the chat box you've got the link there for tomorrow's session as always, you know, this isn't just what we do at Sticky Learning at, at MBM. We have the virtual classrooms available where we have a whole raft of soft skills. Oh, I hate that word and I wish I could find a better word, soft skills, because these skills aren't soft. These skills are necessary, important and, you know, uncommon, regrettably, in a lot of people and a lot of businesses. And this is where we want to share them. So the virtual classroom, there is a link there for the virtual classrooms. Come and see what we do. Start a conversation. Speak to Darren, the founder. Speak to us at, you know, at MBM and see how we can bring these, these lessons to life for you and your businesses to help improve the results you're getting as an individual, as a team, as an organization. And you know, it's, that's what they're there for. So we want to open up the conversation. Final question, Kat. any studies which show procrastination is addictive? I don't know specifically if there are any studies, I haven't seen them myself, to say if they're addictive. What I do know though, as I started you know, this a couple of days ago, is your central nervous system is designed for comfort. It's an evolutionary function to keep you safe, and in order to do that, it needs to create a sense of security. Do I know where my food is? Do I know where my salary is coming from? Do I know where my children are? You know, all these things. So your 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 whole evolution is is wired around this. 
but it's all about playing safe. When you get into the things like comfort zones though, you know, your, your comfort zone will either shrink or expand to meet you wherever you stand in relation to it. He says, let's see what room I've got here. If this is me and this is my comfort zone, if I stand right in the middle of it and get super comfortable, my comfort zone will shrink to meet me. If I stand out here though, in discomfort, my comfort zone will actually expand to meet me until my comfort zone is bigger. You have a choice how and where you want to stand with, in or outside of that. What I do know is the further inside your comfort zone you stand, the more restricted you will become until you're shrink wrapped in your own comfort zone and you'll have no wiggle space. And as a result of that, you then get into the mental health conversations and the challenges that come with that. We have to be experiencing growth. Although our central nervous system is wired for comfort, our psyche and our, um, our, our soul, as, as for want of better words, is actually designed for growth and our mentality. So we have to push ourselves out there to experience that growth. And life begins at the edge of your comfort zone, as Neil Donald Walsh says. Neil Donald Walsh, I think it is. You now you have to, you know, change, you know, requires challenge. And you have to live in a place of discomfort in order to get that traction you need. And without it, without that level of uncertainty and you stay in that certainty, anxiety kicks in because you can't deal with the other, with the with the ad hoc cases or the, the, the curveballs coming in. So you have to be constantly pushing at the boundaries and playing in a different space. Ah, what a way to finish. Three days of procrastination. And fingers crossed that means that your procrastination is now a thing of joy and a thing to be um, made use of and is now a tool, an instrument that's helping you to understand that you're going in the right direction because the moment you do something that's uncomfortable, your procrastination is going to kick in. You can see it for what it is, hear your own excuses and still take action. Scale of one to ten, one being terrible, useless, never going to you know, come to one of these sessions ever again. Ten being phenomenal, really useful, making a difference. We've got ten, ten, ten. We've got an eleven. We've got a nine and a half. Karen coming in with a nine. Thanks, Karen. Zero, Petra. I hope that was a typo. <laughs> yes, it was. Ooh, yeah, my heart going there. <laughs> thank you very much everyone look it is time we have overrun by three minutes i'm just checking my clock thank you thank you thank you thank you all of you for being here it's very appreciated this stuff is very important to me why because i've done this a lot of my life okay i want you to do something different and because of that understanding because of this experience i want you to have these tools and i want you to do something different with that and make an exception okay Everyone be incredible. Thank you very much. Have a phenomenal rest of your day. We look forward to speaking to you tomorrow. If you want to speak about the virtual classroom, link is there. We've got an article on procrastination. Everything's there. Come and find us. Let's have a bigger conversation about this. Everyone have a lovely rest of your day and I'll speak to you tomorrow.